it's Guido coming at you with a tactics talk and today I've got an absolute hootenanny, a barn burner. I am talking a convergence of an epic scale. The Taz 357 Clan DTC in his recently buffed then debuffed AMX M454. Tier 10 and a 10 and 9 battle here on Himmels. Studzianski Pilsen something dwarf. Studzianski dwarf spawned into the east side. This is an absolute, I, it's a, it's a sight to behold. I'm just going to tell you, it is a sight to behold. We have an Ace Mastery, Pascucci's, Radley Walters, high caliber top gun. I'm just going to get that out of the way. So many medals, all the medals. Let's see what the Taz does. Now this was sent in Apparently by Deadhead65, who used to be in the clan. Thanks for sending that in, Deadhead. Appreciate it. I don't know if this is actually Deadhead in a alternate in an alternate uh, account or if this is a clan member. Doesn't matter. All we know is it is the Taz. Actually, it's anonymized, so maybe it is. Maybe it actually is Deadhead. I don't know. Can I tell that over here? As he drives to his initial position. I don't know. I think it actually is the Taz, based on what I can tell. Based on what I can tell. Now he's going to go over here into a position I would expect an M4 to go. It's a lot like a Super Conqueror with the added benefit of some pretty good hole armor. So he comes over here and hangs out by this rubble pile. And he doesn't immediately go and stare down the, uh, the place where the Conqueror is back behind him. And his tier 9 cousin, the M4 51, three years earlier. Hmm. Coffee's nice this morning, by the way. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. If you like what you see here, smash, smash the subscribe. Everyone on YouTube says, mash it, smash. You could probably just press it also. Just a little click and uh, subscribe. If not, let me know what you didn't like. Let me know what you didn't like. Your face, Guido. I don't, okay, noted. Nobody does a face for radio. Lots of guys over in the factory on the west side. And not a lot going on, but I'm going to tell you, this is going to pick up. Now, when I said Convergence earlier, you know those games where you just can do no wrong? Wrong. Where RNG, Dispersion, they all get together and say, you're going to have a game. be nice if you could do that every time, but we don't. Some people do it more than others. But you know what's cool? In nearly any game that you play, nearly any match, somebody has a game. You know what I'm saying? Not always, but I say the vast majority. Somebody on the team has a game. Just look at the stats at the end. Somebody's near the top and just had a really nice little game going on. And what we're gonna what we're gonna see here is the Taz is gonna have a fantastic game. He's gonna come out here, and this Type Four just gonna stare at him. I don't know why. And as soon as I saw that shot, initially the T95 in the middle doing I don't know what. Then that guy just staring. And then the mouse doing this stuff. I said, self, this is going to be a game. We are going to go off. And <laughs> when you have games like this, which I want to say is somewhere around 12,000 combined, I'm just going to let you in on it right now. You might as well, just so you can enjoy. 12,000, something like that combined. When you have games like this, generally the other team chips in. They're like, hey, you... <laughs> You want to have a good game? We'll just help you. I'll, I'll just drive my mouse right here. I'll have a general idea of angling, but not a complete idea of angling. So I'll just sort of angle things in all the wrong directions, and I'll just let you keep popping around and thumping me. <laughs> and just like that, the mouse has been farmed. The Taz even takes time to comment. Then the Type 4 hits him with HE, so that's nice. That didn't hurt very much. I mean, I don't really know why, to be honest, the Taz would push in like that, except that maybe he knows this team is just not going to make it happen. I think those are pinnable, probably, but we're going to be a little bit more patient with that. And then he pops out, and then he goes, Hey, why don't you just shoot me with a flatter shot? What do you think? Right about now. No? Yes. There we go. How we're not being hammered by TDs that are sitting down there, I don't know. Like I said, when you have games like this, a lot of the things the enemy team does are inexplicable. And it could be that you're just getting the 
mistakes right in a row from guys who generally don't make those mistakes and it just happens to be on your game where you're just absolutely owning these guys that little spot right there those angles on the shoulders of the types those are weak spots especially when they try to side scrape and flat plate it to you it's a pretty easy place to pin again i don't know why he's not being shot by people in the back in fact there is a guy what's really funny back at the rock you'll see him in a minute he'll show up there is a tank back there. This was very nice. I like this. Eh, let me just shoot right through this wall and we'll nuke that dude. <laughs> Here comes the Pascucci's, the first of his medals. We're already up to 4,600 damage. Not a bad game overall just to begin with here. What's also interesting is the enemy team will make a bit of a comeback here. And despite the amount of damage we're about to drop, the game is closer for a while than you might expect. The tortoise is back at cap. Why did the TNH not shoot him? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> maybe he was maybe he was supporting the hill. There was some action on the hill. Now we found another Artie. Let's just knock him out. Boop. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when you have games like this, these inexplicable things happen where you uh, it you just can't explain the inexplicable. You know what I'm saying? You can't. <laughs> 515. Is that the second 515 roll I've seen? TNH goes and hides behind the rock once again. He doesn't like what's going on. Looks like my highlight bug is back because he's not getting the highlights. He did have just the back of the tank right there. And we're just sitting here. I don't know. Why is he not being hit by the 1104? Maybe the 1104 is not nearby. Turns out he actually is. I don't know. I don't know. 5,700. We got five kills. The other... Uh, the other AMX M4 is trying to figure out what to do, and I don't know why he's just not coming around the corner, if I'm honest. I don't know why he's not coming around the corner. What, is there somebody behind? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Well, he, no. No, there's nothing back there. I mean, he could be worried about some of the TDs, but more than likely the 1103 has been spotted over there. That'd be my guess. Maybe he's worried about the 4005. Perhaps the 4005 hasn't quite been spotted. He is on the hill right there. But he won't have any shots coming around the corner. Like I said, I don't know. I don't know why I swallowed the fly. Down goes his cousin. Come back over to this side of the factory. To be honest, if they pushed him, they'd probably kill him. The 4005 is falling back. All of a sudden, as you can see, the game is more or less evened up. It does show him with a 3,000, now 1,000 hit point discrepancy but more than likely the tanks outside of his view range and whatnot are not quite accounted for correctly on his list so just hanging out in the middle looking for an opportunity 5794 damage 359 assists and we got five kills and just it seems like the other team came into this battle to rig the battle for the Taz <laughs> Now, I'm not saying the game is rigged for the Taz. Clearly, it's not. These people are all ish playing. Or what they, what they, I would assume they think is playing. I don't know. How come the 110 A4 isn't th slapping him? The, the T10 is going to come up and over? Sure, why not? I don't know. Right, yeah, just, I guess. That's why the TNH didn't shoot him, by the way. He moved up to the north. Now we got the T10 running around. Remember, the T10 showed up with more or less full hit points, I believe. You know, they could just push him. It's over. You know, M4, T10, go get the guy. Uh, nope, we'll just uh, take some hit points there. Here comes the 110 E4 now. Okay, that's why we haven't been hit by him. He's been way over there. He's making a runner. I'll look for a shot here without getting hit. Oh, oh boy. Uh, I might have done a timing shot. That was interesting, actually. We switched out of that. Must have been shooting the gold ammo. It would have been a blind shot, but it would have been a little bit better. Can you actually find it? No, you can't get through those windows there. Still at the M454 right there in the factory with us. The TNH is a one shot. He's sitting up on the hill. Looks like Taz wants to pull back and maybe get a shot on that guy. A little arty shot goes in. He comes around. TNH looks at him. He's like, I'm going to shoot you. Nope, going to bounce. And we'll just uh, just delete him as well. Nice thing about this thing's gold round is it is a gold APCR round. Or is it gold AP? Uh, APCC. Whatever. Is that APCR? I don't know. 
but it's got 296 penetration, which is kind of lackluster. But based on the tanks he's been facing, he's been able to get into weak spots, into the side, all that good stuff. It is kind of amazing that he made it work that well against the Miles, but he certainly did. Like I said, if you have a game like this, we're up to 7,656 damage. Things are going to work out in your favor. So the Taz has absolutely owned this area. The other M4 gets busy, comes out, slaps a shot on him. Gets his forward turret looking forward, his forward turret looking forward. Down goes the M454, and now he's making a bold move. That seemed a little early. He eats a big shot finally. Keeps on trucking. I think he needs to do that. He doesn't want the T95 to hit him in the side. And like I said, things just go your way. The 1104 fired, so he's got a long reload. Several of our buddies are looking at him, so he takes hits. Watch the little wiggle jiggle with the turret, or with the hole. Everything kind of jiggling and whatnot. Make up, yeah, look at that. Boom. HE. We go for the weak spot, but we miss. That, that is literally, I think, the only flub of this entire thing, of the convergence, the only non-convergence item made up for by that right into the lower plate. That was a good shot, actually. We got a T95. We're at 8,347, and we ain't done yet. Tortoise is sort of staring at him, and then he decides to start moving because he's getting hit from the side. The Taz comes up, side armor, slap the tortoise. T95 is sort of looking at him, so he backs out, I think, wisely. T95 probably ends him. He's uh, just starting to move towards him right there. Down goes the Tortois. T95 is getting pressed from multiple directions. We have eight kills. Can we get the ninth? Can we get the ninth? Ooh. Nope. No. Nope. Kill Stealer would have waited for the first hit into him, but... The double tap from the 110 and the STB might have killed him before he could get it. But check out the totals on this, my friends. 9,548 damage, 8 kills, 3,167 assists, well over 12,000. Well over 12,000 total. Holy cow, what a massive game. Well played all around. Obviously, the other team really uh, seemed like teammates, to be honest. <laughs> You had a lot of teammates on your on your damage train. You were the conductor of the pain train, my friend. And there were no other passengers. You were the conductor and the passenger. Absolutely bringing the pain to this poor purple team. That was, uh, that was brutal. I mean, it was just a brutalization of the purple team. The convergence of all things working for you in World of Tanks that you rarely see. And this was definitely your game. Taz, the Taz, 357 Clan DTC with the epic tier 10 battle. Earned every piece of it. Some, well, did he? I don't know. Some of it was handed, it felt like. But <laughs> look, you were in the right place, taking the right shots. Gun was singing nearly the entire game. Thanks for sending that in, guys. I do appreciate it. For everybody else, thanks for supporting the channel, and we will see you.